How's it going, everybody? Hope you're all doing well. So I got a lot of requests on a Faraday cage or a Far Faraday box, and what do I use? Now, first up, I'm not a professional in this kind of setup at all. If you want to actually get the details, I think what the YouTube name is Disaster Prepper. He is like literally a straight genius on all of this kind of EMP based stuff and I have got a lot of information off of him haven't really upgraded to the stuff yet haven't had the time but temporary for really cheap I'm just going to show you what I use now this isn't a guarantee either I don't know if this will 100% work it might work you know 60% or whatnot not 100% sure like I said but this is what I do so here's an empty just empty one you can see I use blue tape and I date and stuff for all my ammo but this is just an empty one that I kind of swapped out with so this is the smaller can or not the the skinny ones I, I tend not to go with those because you can't fit a lot in to them I used to use this kind this is like the 50 cal can and this is like the bigger can which I'll show here in a second so the one thing if you are going to convert say an ammo can into a Faraday cage the one thing you kind of got to get rid of it's pretty well set up now, there's a lot of different people and different opinions out there on this specific subject. Some people say you need to take the paint off and the coating because it's not technically a metal-on-metal -metal, um, seal. Now, you can do that, but the one thing you're going to have to do is take out the rubber gasket on the lid. So it's not that difficult to get out if you have like a small pry bar or something. It just pops right out, and then you got to fill this void with you know, metal or like aluminum foil or the thicker industrial kind. That's what I did, and I'm going to show you here in a second. So I just wanted to specifically point out that there is this gasket in here that you're going to have to get rid of, in my opinion. Like I said, not a professional, but I'm pretty sure you're going to need metal-on-metal -metal contact. So let's get this out of the way. And then I will show you this is mine. So this is the bigger can. Now... This one is pretty hefty, and I like it because you can fit more stuff into it because you're not getting the full dimensions of the actual can itself because you got to line it. Now, you can kind of see I, it doesn't look that great like I kind of taped over it. and it, I mean, I'm not in it for the looks. I'm just, you know, 100% just trying to make it work. So what I specifically used somewhat was aluminum foil, the really good industrial kind, and then this... Also, aluminum foil tape for, like, duct work and stuff. This is kind of expensive, actually, but when you look at it, you're like, oh, my gosh, it's going to be that much for a roll of tape. But I've had this for years and done a couple cans over it, and it lasts, and it's actually really good stuff. So let's push straight into it, and I'm going to show you kind of what I keep in it, but mainly the how I made it. Now, inside, obviously, it doesn't look that great. But first off, you can see I lined everything with the really thick aluminum foil, including all the way down in these uh, crevices and cracks. This right here was the hardest part to do. Uh, the rest of the can honestly wasn't that difficult. It took me like, I don't know, maybe an hour to do if sitting in front of the TV just relaxing and whatnot. But I completely lined it with everything and then I put the foam down because from what I've researched at least you want to keep your items away from the metal because then that kind of defeats the purpose because the the metal should get charged like when it gets you know all those uh, electronics and stuff it should charge actually the exterior and not penetrate but if you have no backing or like foam or just cardboard, you can use that to keep it away from it. It can influence your electronics. So this stuff isn't like this stuff comes out. You can kind of see and you can see how like well it was. If I can get a good angle on it, it's kind of reflective, of course. But I kind of stuffed a lot more down in there to still give it kind of a good seal. Now, this isn't waterproof anymore once you take that seal out. But I don't tend on keeping this outside this has kind of another housing it's kind of like if you're familiar with the russian dolls how they kind of keep popping out of each other you can kind of like uh, undo them that's kind of what i have the setup with this and i'm going to show that here in a second so let me just go through the can itself 
So I completely have everything lined. I'm not going to go in extreme detail what I have in here, but I also keep a piece of foam on top. So I have like another set of PVS 14s. These always ride in here. My primaries are always in my bag, but just in case I keep the uh, PVS 14s along with like a little Baofeng radio. It's down here with, with some batteries because a lot of people say batteries are going to be fine. No, they're not. Blah, 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 back and forth. I, I, no one, I don't think, ever really knows. So I just threw a whole pack of batteries actually in the bottom here. Like you can see foam. They're just lined up down there just in case if batteries were for some odd reason, which I highly doubt they will be, but I like to be you know, ready to roll. Along with a flashlight, this is one of the Sidewinders. This does IR light and normal visual light. So, like, I run a lot of night vision, as you can see. Really handy. So I have an antenna and the charger for this. And I also keep a one of the Goal Zero solar chargers um, with battery packs and everything like that in here as well. So, you know, obviously just in case. So, that's pretty much it. Now, I used to keep GPS in here. Now I keep it in a different location, but there's all kinds of different things you can do. So as you can see, like how big my hand is, how much this like takes up or how much room or what you can fit in it, make your own best decision on what you think that will work in here. I mean, so far it's worked, but how do we really know if it worked? You know, that's kind of the next question for it. So I'm going to take you over to a couple options actually that I plan on using and then in a way currently use. So let me just change the camera angle around and I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, so I picked up some of these at like a surplus store, like military surplus store. They sell some of these crates and these are aluminum and they're pretty big. So I'm gonna get into it just quick. And I'm thinking about converting this into a Faraday cage or a Faraday box as well. So they're actually pretty nicely made. They are aluminum. They do have latches on them. I personally added uh, the locking mechanism to it. I did keep these in the back of my vehicle as storage and up on my roof rack. But they're really nice and held together very well. So fully aluminum. And then I don't know if you can see that. Eh, yeah, you can a little bit. But it is ha it does have a gasket all the way around it so that might be an issue i'm gonna probably have to do something about that but these are you know pretty deep decent boxes that i i'm i picked them up for pretty cheap um they didn't really know what they had so i just kind of went with it but this is a really good alternative to that i am going to be creating here pretty soon with it so if you can find these types of boxes then it might work out really well for you they are reasonably lightweight too. Like I can just pick this up myself and no issues. They have handles on the sides and whatnot. So you can kind of see they're not that heavy at all. I have a couple of them, picked them up. But that's an option for you. So if you want something bigger that can house maybe multiple radios or PVS 14s or GPSs or, you know, the, the list goes on. Now, I have one other alternative that I'm currently using, and it's not set up too well, so let me show you that. All right, so here's the other kind of option and in what I specifically use. Now, kind of like I was talking about the dolls, how they pop in and out of their cells, um, the Russian dolls, what I'm talking about. I actually put my other Faraday cage inside this. So this is, you know, a common job box. This one's a pretty big one. This is like a 48 by you know 30 36 or something like that i'm not too sure of the dimensions and there's m multiple different people make these but this is what i uh have my stuff in along with you know extra ammo and other stuff like that and i also have these in different locations in storage containers like further out away from my home as in kind of stopping points to get to my bug out location and they since they're metal they are a steel box. They work really well at, you know, stopping EMP. Not 100%, but they will definitely cut down on a ton of that radio, you know, the radio waves and all the other different stuff. Not going to get into the details. There's probably more of you out there that are completely familiar with it, but this does a reasonably 
decent job at stopping at it. And especially if you double up or even triple or quadruple or you keep going, like I was saying, different tiers and different levels. So this is a solid option that I would recommend looking into. Now, there's different other techniques that are way cheaper, like you can use just a steel trash can with a lid lined with uh, cardboard, and that'll work just as well. But I like this because it's heavy duty. People can't steal this as easily. It's cabled down, decent locks on them and everything like that, and it's, it's hard to get into. So that's what I currently use. I imagine there's a ton of you out there that use different setups that you might think that's right. Like I said, I think it's disaster prepper won't quote me i'll probably put it in the link below go check out his because he actually does specific tests he has a machine that will actually like completely bombard um ammo cans and faraday cages and different things that he's made with the proper level that could possibly we could see in an emp so he tests these things legitimately and he sells things on his website for it too so yeah, just I would definitely recommend taking a look at that. But this is what I currently use as Faraday cage or EMP proof kind of box or other things like that. So if you guys kind of like this type of stuff, I do continue on or plan on continuing this kind of series and talking about other aspects like, you know, EMP and water and food and different, you know, economic collapse and other things like that. But there's a lot of other stuff in this channel, too. So if you like that kind of stuff, definitely hit that subscribe button because there's a lot more coming. Hit that like, let me know that you liked it, and also comment below. If you have something else or you like it, definitely comment. Awesome, thank you.